If you want to remove blemishes, lint, or any imperfections, there is no straightforward way to do this in Final Cut. Dylan Bates, the Final Cut bro, has made a fantastic video about this topic and his clone stem plugin. If a clone stem is what you're looking for, I encourage you to check out his video and his plugin. I will link it in the video description. In this video, we will have a look at the spot healing brush. If you're not familiar with both, what is the difference? Well, the clone stem does what its name suggests. It copies an area of your footage and pastes it to somewhere else. The spot healing brush, on the other hand, only copies brightness and color information, so it won't copy any kind of structure. In this beautiful shot, I made the horrible mistake to film myself before 10 a.m. and I want to remove this mole, so I will grab my spot healing brush. As you can see, nothing happens, because this is in masking and tracking mode. First, we will need to track the mole. I will add a shape mask, switch to the tracker, and adjust its size. Maybe something like this would do the trick. Then I will put it on top of the mole. I try to get rid of the frame of my glasses here and something like this. Before I start the tracking though, I will grab myself a color curves adjustment and then I put it right at the beginning of our signal chain. Remember the inspector goes from top to bottom with the input at the top and the output at the bottom. The tracker will live in this shape mask, so I want to make the job for the tracker a little bit more easy. So I go into the color curves at the beginning of our signal chain and increase the contrast quite a bit, so the tracker can see the mole clearly. This will improve the tracking quality a bit. Let's go back to our shape mask and track this mole. Let's skim through this. Okay, it's losing it around here, so I have to retrack this. Um, Let's go back a few frames and let's analyze this forward again. Let's have a look. Could be good enough. I can get rid of the color curves, then I go back to the mask. Now we need to change the tracking behavior. I don't need the rotation and scale, so I will change the behavior from pin to tracker to offset from tracker and disable rotation and scale. I can go back to the shape now and adjust its size to cover only my mole. Reduce the size just a little bit more, something like this. Now I can click on done and if I switch from masking and tracking mode to effect mode, you can see that it's almost gone. As mentioned before, the spot healing brush only cares about color and brightness, so maybe we need to change this a little bit. Additionally, you have the radius which controls how much of an area the spot healing brush looks at to sample from. I hope that made sense. So let's play around with the radius if we can make it work here and I don't think it's making that much of a difference. Maybe we just have to increase the brightness a bit, something like this. And I think for the sake of this tutorial, it's good enough. Let's zoom out and play that back. As you can see, my tracking would need some work, but I think you get the general idea. If you have a look at the spot healing brush again, you can see that the blend mode is set to lighten, which is a default. Another default is the darken blend mode, and we will get to this now. Let's switch to this shot and let's pretend I want to remove this water drop here. I will add the spot healing brush and do the same as we did before. I will get my mask here, get the drop I want to remove and adjust the feather. Now I don't want to track this because I think you get the idea. So let's zoom in here. If I switch the mode from masking and tracking mode to effect mode, you can see nothing really happens. And this is what I just mentioned. If you want to remove something dark from something light, for example, the mole from my skin, you need to set the blend mode to lighten because the surrounding skin is brighter than the mole. In this case, however, the surrounding tomato is darker than the water drop we want to remove. So we need to darken the water drop. This means we need to change the blend mode to darken. And have a look at this just like that. The water drop disappeared. I think I can still see it a little bit, so let's have a look at what we can achieve with the radius. Maybe something like this, and I think we have to decrease the brightness just a tad. This is before, this is after. I think you get the overall idea.